Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Our Glass Combo. This is the story of the men and officers of the 7th Infantry Division Band, winners of a meritorious unit commendation for outstanding services in support of combat operations in Korea from September 1950 through June 1951. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young men, if you're interested in continuing your education, here's important news for you. You can be trained in one of the world's finest technical schools for a career that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. Right now, the United States Army has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and maintain the many kinds of equipment developed by science for our modern armed forces. Today, men are being trained in such varied fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many others. As Army specialists, these men are embarking on careers that offer wonderful opportunities for advancement, high living standards, valuable experience, and liberal retirement benefits. A career in today's United States Army offers excellent opportunities for young men with intelligence and ambition. For full information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production Hourglass Combo. Earl, you Hi, made it. Steve. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I hope I'm not late. After I've been waiting huh? three years for you to shake yourself loose from the army, you think another half hour makes any difference? <laughs> Ah, kid, it's wonderful to see you. Yeah, I had to make one call on the way to the club. Forget there, it, forget it, Earl. <laughs> You're here, that's all that counts. Welcome back to 7th <laughs> Avenue. Oh, what do you have? Highball straight? No, 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 I'll just take a beer, Steve. Angie! Yeah? One beer for the soldier, make it cold. Hi, came all the way from Korea for this one. Here, here. Sit down, let me have a look at you. Yeah. Ah, oh, boy. You're looking great. <laughs> I'll give the Army that much credit. You never looked better shape in your life. Hey, Sergeant gets the beer. That's right. It's on the house, Sergeant. We've been waiting a long while to hear that horn of yours. <laughs> oh, thanks, Angie. It's good to be back for a while. What? Hmm? Wait a minute, Earl. What's this, what's this back for a while stuff? I can see you're still in uniform. But I figure that's because you hadn't had time to order up some civilian clothes. Look, there hasn't been any follow-up about you getting out of service, has there? After all the points you racked up? No, no, there hasn't been any follow-up, Steve. The only okay, thing is I... okay, whatever it is. As long as you're clear and out. For a minute there, you had me scared. What do you mean, scared of what? I got plans, kid. Oh? With your trumpet back in the band, we're going to start climbing right for the top again. Club bookings here, Chicago, Florida, TV, radio and recording dates mixed in all the way. Maybe even the Paramount before the now, year is minute, out. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, Steve. I'm glad to hear it looks like a good season Not for, for you, me, but... kid, for us. Okay, okay, it's still my band. But we're going to be featuring Earl Decker and that trumpet that sends him traveling. Look, signal's off, Steve. I'm booked up. Booked up? Yeah. You mean you'd sign with another band after all? No, the, no, time? the music I'll be making won't compete with yours. I've re-enlisted in the Army. You've... You've re-enlisted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I signed on my way over here. That's what held me up. Look, look, Earl. I figure I'm as patriotic as the next guy. But to bury a good horn man like you off in the army... I'm yeah. sticking to music, Steve, either back in the 7th Division Band or some other outfit. I'm going through with army music as my career. Well, I'll be... Earl, you sure you feel okay? I never felt better. Why? I just don't get it. <laughs> You're a musician. 
You could rank up there with any of them before you're through. I mean, any of them. Beiderbeck, Satchmo, any of them. Look, I'm not that good, Steve. You might be if you gave yourself a chance. I'll have 27 years of all the chance any horn man could ask for. And army bandsman's never between bookings, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, you're not going to tan my hair off if I can show you you're wrong. Well, I don't think you can, Steve, and I'm sorry if I've thrown off any plans you've been making. Forget my plans. I can sign another trumpet player if I have to, and the bookings are lined up no matter who I have. The thing is this. What about your own kind of guys, Earl? I mean, like Avery, Kaser, Searing. You don't find guys like that in the army, do you? Oh, Steve, Steve. Men just like them, and a lot more. I found more real friends in the hourglass division than I ever had in my life. Real friends? How could they come any better than Scotty and Phil and Pop? Yes, and Chief Margolin and Velasco and even Kim Taewon. Hey, Earl! Earl! You gonna give us some trumpet on this now, or do we have to make with a birthday cake first? Yeah. What do you, the birthday cake? What do you mean, Scotty? Hey, Pop, do we break down and tell him now? Well, you told him, haven't you? All right, Earl, here's wishing your flock a happy return. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. what's going on? Happy birthday, Southern, now's when I go for cake. Kim, now's exactly when you go for it. And for those cans of chicken and sardines and box of candles. Okay, I'll go. And Earl, here's why I pay you that five bucks I've owed you since Yokohama. Huh? Many happy returns, fella. Hey, wait a minute, Phil. Wait a minute. That's just his own money you're giving him back. You know what my present is, Earl? What? I'm going to clean your rifle and shine those shoes of yours before inspection tomorrow. <laughs> I might have to borrow your polish and patch. Hey, break it off, Scotty, will you? If you're going to surprise a guy, what kind of a deal is it to go around selling off about it ahead of time? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! How did you fellas even know it was my birthday? I didn't tell anybody. It's in your service record, isn't it? The company clerk tipped Pop and Pop briefed us. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. What we still want is some of that trumpet of yours on Sunnyside. Do we get it, Earl, or do we have to send back your cake to the mess sergeant? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, you mean I don't even get a taste of my own birthday cake unless I... Right, it? right. No horn, no cake. And no chicken, no five bucks paid up. No rifle play, no nothing. Pop, 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 they're sandbagging I'm me. sandbagging right along with them, Earl. The T.O. on this hourglass combo calls for some trumpet, and I want to hear it, Okay, boy. okay, let's go, but I'm talking... Wait till your birthday, Pop. We'll have you slapping that bass from Reveille to Taps. <laughs> the guys, the Scotty and the Pop and Phil and Kim T. Wee or whatever you no, call them. No, no, no. His name's Kim Tae Wan. Kim Tae Wan. No, he's a little South Korean attached to us back in the fall of 50. I'm telling you, you butter an eel and mix in plenty of Navajo, you still wouldn't have a better scout yeah. than Kim Tae Wan. I've seen him. Okay, I've... Earl, I'll take your word for it. Great guys all around. The whole 7th Division, the Koreans working with him. I'd still like to know what a good bandsman does in the Look, army. Well, Steve, okay, if you... there's a parade, a band sounds fine up in front, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how often do they have parades these days? And, and they just park you guys off under wraps somewhere when real trouble starts, don't they? Look, Steve, they don't throw us in front-line rifle companies, if that's what you mean. But the 8th Army wouldn't have given the unit this citation ribbon if they just figured us as a peacetime luxury. You mean that one over your right pocket that's that right. some kind of a medal you got? No, no, it's a unit citation. I was just lucky enough to be with good men in a good outfit. In the name of the place the 7th Division went into Korea was Incheon. It was back in September of 50. The 60-odd bandsmen of the Hourglass Division were just one small element of the crack United Nations task force that landed at Incheon on the 17th and 18th of September 1950 and started the drive that was to knock the communists loose from South Korea. But like every unit of that powerful invasion team, the bandsmen had their assignments and carried them out successfully. Parts of the combination given them the following July tell how army musicians can double in more than brass if needed. By direction of the Secretary of the Army, under the provisions of AR 360-15, the 7th Infantry Division Band is cited for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding services in Korea in support of combat operations during the period from 1 September 1950 to 30 June 1951. After the Inchon invasion, 
members of the band set aside their musical instruments and took active part in the defense of the division command post. From time to time, band members were formed into reconnaissance patrols and combed the rugged Korean hills searching for guerrilla hideouts. At a time when enemy raiding parties and ambushes were a nightly occurrence and invasion forces were fighting to relieve pressure on embattled United Nations forces to the south, the band established roadblocks, participated in outpost duty and guarded vital supplies. On several occasions, braving sub-zero weather and enemy action, the small unit served as advance party for the division command. Working tirelessly, the band organized variety shows and musical combinations for the entertainment of line soldiers whenever the tactical situation permitted. The exemplary conduct of the men... The entertainment of line soldiers whenever the tactical situation permitted. As the armies of the Red Aggressors were ripped apart and driven from South Korea, the bandsmen of the Hourglass Division were able to devote increasing amounts of time to that pleasanter side of their duties. Traveling by jeep and truck or pushing ahead on foot, Earl, Scotty, Phil, Pop, and the others of the Hourglass Combo were one of the small subunits that fanned out to regimental, battalion, and company posts to rest in forward areas, to keep bringing straight-from-home music to the combat men, and uh, sometimes music that uh, wasn't so straight from home. You guys, you call them, we play them. Sandman, coming up. that you had good guys and I can see now maybe you earned some of your pay over there in Korea we were just in support Steve the infantry and the rest of them on straight combat assignments were the one who really earned their pay <laughs> but we got a charge out of helping them when we could <laughs> you used to sleep till noon when you're here with us on 7th Avenue right? yeah I remember look if they kept you so busy over there didn't you miss the good times we used to have and the good, easy times you can have again if you'll only sign out of the Army but and come we back. had our good times over there, Steve. We had a 15 R&R deal operating as soon as we got by those first four or five tough months. Oh, what's an R&R deal? Rest and recuperation. A couple of times that even got us to Tokyo. Look, the way they worked it, 15% of the men in the unit could be away on leave at any given time. And we set up the schedule by drawing for dates. I mean, a kind of a lottery. Yeah, yeah, it was the only way we could do it, you know. We'd all gone in about the same time, and the points were pretty much even. Uh -huh. I remember the second lottery we had, about 50 of us drawing for just five places open on a Japan-bound tank. All right, fellas, uh, you're, uh, you're all going to get your draw, so don't crowd in here. Kim's shuffling up the numbers in his helmet, and there's one in there for all of you. Yeah. Now, the payoff numbers are one to five, huh? That's right, one to five. They get you to Tokyo. The higher numbers hold on here till next time. You all set there, Kim? All set, Sato. All right, file by and pull your numbers. I'll check and call them out. Uh, here's mine, Pop. Yeah. Ooh, let it be low. 37, Phil. Oh, no. <laughs> so long, next. Tokyo. 14. Uh, next. 31. Uh, next. Hey, it's a five, Scotty. You're in. Wow! Wow! Thank you, Bob. Good shoveling, kid. 18, 42, 9, 3. Hey! It's yours, Earl. That's mine. That's hey, it. Hey, Earl, hey, you Bob. got it made. We're uh, headed for Tokyo. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Scotty. Pop, we'll hit the PXs for you. You just name anything. Now, you listen, want. you lucky stiffs. You better get going before we call a recount. Yeah. We got three more numbers to find sure here. Thing. Come on, Earl. Let's get packing. 22. Tough luck, Mac. Wow, Tokyo. A yeah. solid week of leave to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Earl, that was the jackpot we hit.
You are listening to the proudly be hailed production, Hourglass Combo. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young man, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? In selecting your life's work, it's important to consider all of the requirements of a satisfactory career. Opportunities for advancement, dignity and importance of your work, permanence of your job, living standards, retirement benefits, and value of experience. When you choose a career in the United States Army, you'll find it's more than just another means of earning a living. Your Army career will be a way of life, rich in fine associations, the satisfaction that stems from public service, and the opportunity for achievement and adventure in the far corners of the world. So, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station right away and ask about the career opportunities in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Hourglass Combo. Tokyo, one of the great lead towns of the Korean War, where the musical styles of East and West were meeting in ways that would have startled Madame Butterfly, and where Earl and Scotty, on a typical musician's holiday, were touring the clubs and night spots to hear all the town had to offer. Oh, man. Hey, Earl, dig that Tokyo boogie. Man, this outfit's cool. Cool? Scotty's melting the piano. Where's the left hand? in a clarinet case. They keep a block of chickens right in with her. Only my nights are blue Because I made a fool of you Won't you forgive me, dear My butterfly heart Has brought me pain Won't you forgive won't you forget? Let's be sweethearts again. Go on aside. Nights would be heaven, love fill my days. If you believe me when I say I love you, go on Look at this, Earl. Ah, That's solid it. ivory chess set. All hand car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you think Pop would like to have it? Ah, no, nah, we're overboard on the Sarge now. Those cans of ravioli and the fly swatters and that Korean diction. Yeah. How about Phil? Nah, he wouldn't know a chess set from a box of candlesticks. <laughs> we got enough new reads for him to keep him stocked up till he gets stateside. Yeah, hey, 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 look. Hmm? Look, fish poles. Yeah. Oh, what about these spinners and glass rods and everything? Well, I'll be. They've even got skis yeah, here. Yeah, well, we better head back to the food counter, Scotty. We can pack in a few more cans of lobster meat, but I'd hate to try finding room for a pair of those skis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Uh, wait. Oh, man. What about those kimonos over there, huh? Oh, wouldn't one of those green silk jobs be great for my girl? What do you mean, the redhead? Of course the redhead. You think I'd send stuff back home to anybody but Julie? Well, I don't know. Anyway, you pick out your kimono. I'm going to get one of those pipes for Kim. Sure thing. Hey, that's on the nose for Kim. He's been wanting to sit in with a combo ever since well, I... Wait a minute. You were picking out a kimono for Julie, remember? Oh, yeah, well, you know, maybe Julie would get a bang out of one of these, too. Come on, let's hear how they sound. Hey, that's all right, Earl. Let me give you a beat.
Okay, okay, Earl. You nearly got me on the ropes. You liked your time off in Tokyo. You liked the guys in your outfit. And your army bandsmen seem to have been doing a pretty fair job of being useful over there. But I still say... You still say what, Steve? Well, you were starting to do some arranging for us back before you enlisted. Yeah, yeah. Remember how you said you were going to get some serious music in before you were through? Yeah, sure, I remember. Now, don't, don't, don't take this against the army kid. But where would you get a chance in service to learn the kind of things you said you were going to get to? What do you mean, construction and theory? Whatever you call it, the kind of heavy-duty stuff they teach them over at the uh, Juilliard, places like Steve, that. Steve, Steve, Chief Warrant Officer Margolin's a graduate of the conservatory at Oberlin. We had a half a dozen Juilliard men right in our own outfit. They've been helping me keep up my studying all along. You've been able to keep up with all that stuff? Keep up and move ahead. In the Army, I'll be learning more in my own field every year. Lots more than I ever got outside. Whether I'm good enough to do any real arranging and composing, I still have to find out, sure. But if I miss, won't be for me not having the chance. Hmm. You sure you don't want another beer? No, no thanks, Steve. I'm meeting Laura. I should be shoving off pretty soon anyway. Okay. Let's get down to bedrock. I still got two last points oh, here. All right, come on, come on. Give over, Steve. Will you? I'm staying in the Army, and Laura's as much in favor of it as I am. You I'm haven't right. heard my points. Of course, if you're too stubborn, oh, even right, to listen. All right, all right, all right. What are your points? The first one's audiences. Uh -huh. You could be heard and known by millions from coast to coast. I know, I know you never grabbed for the spotlight, but being known can be a pretty good feeling. Now, what's your other point? Dough. <laughs> and it's a crusher. You figure you ever can get rich in the army? No, no, I wouldn't say rich. Come on back with us, Earl, and you can be drawing down hundreds a week before the year is out. Next year, maybe up in the thousands. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, Steve, how much money you got in your pockets right now? Well, look, we've got a big deal no, coming no, up next week. Come on, time. come on, get your wallet out. I'm not talking about next week or next year, but right now. All right. Ooh, ooh, Steve, you're doing better than I thought. A five and two cents. All right, so maybe it's just seven bucks right this minute. But only last month... Look, I've got 60-odd in a bank book, back with my stuff. Don't be so embarrassed, Who's Steve. embarrassed? I know the routine from way back. Up in the chips one week, flat broke the next. Didn't I have two years of it with you? Those were the old days. I've smartened up since then, Earl. Uh, I know all the managers. I know how to pick our spots for the big build-up. Records, guest shots on radio and television. But right now in the Army, Steve, I'm saving more money than I was ever able to outside. Yeah? Yeah. If I hit warrant officer, Laura and I will probably have a house built before you get through chasing from room rent. And 27 years from now, Steve, when I'm still a long way from the shelf, I'll go on three-quarters pay for life and be able to take any outside work I want. You mean just playing it safe, not gambling on yourself? No, I mean, I mean just doing what I've always wanted to do, make good music and keep on learning more about it. And that's exactly what the Army's going to pay me to do. Yeah, well, I told you about these bookings well, that I've, I've got... I've got a better booking, Steve. Or at least it's, it's, it's the one I want. And you talk about audiences? Sure, I like people to like what I play, but I've been having the best listeners I ever had since I was big enough to get my lips up to a mouthpiece. Steve, I remember one night when it was still rugged over in Korea, this hourglass combo of ours was up at a company post running a session from the back of a truck. There were six of us, counting the driver who doubled on the drums, and there might have been about 90 men out listening to us. <laughs> But then, just as we were starting another number... Okay, all platoons, back up on the hill to combat positions. The Reds are trying to come over on the double! Crazy attack, Steve, and nearly battalion strength. Pop and the rest of us grabbed our carbines and started up the hill to see what we could do to help out. But the captain told us everything was under control, and brother, it was. The way his men and the artillery chopped up that attack, I think they could have chewed up a regiment. We were just packing up to clear out, figuring we'd only be in the way if they wouldn't let us fight, when the first two or three squads started filing back. As far as they were concerned, the attack had just been a fast intermission. 
That company wanted its music, and no four or five hundred reds were going to keep them from having it. Well, we picked up right where we left off, and before we finished the number, we had more men out in front than we had to start with. Get riding, Earl. That's an audience you got out there. I get stupid. They don't come any stupider. What do you mean, Steve? <laughs> Here, I've been trying to talk you out of the army, and now you got me thinking maybe I've been missing out on a real deal all along. No! What's the age limit for a musician to get in? <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Look, Steve, I wasn't making a pitch for you. I know, I know, I know. Maybe I'd fall apart if I ever tried to take a physical. <laughs> How's about filling me in on what it takes? I'm not saying I am going to try to enlist, remember. I don't want anybody thinking I'm a pushover. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want a witness to this. Angie? Yeah. Angie, come on over here. Some 7th Avenue history being made. <laughs> okay, now, Steve, what was it you wanted to know? The man who measures up will succeed anywhere. For a life of excitement and adventure, join the United States Army. The Army is the proving ground, the place where the men and the boys part company, where you learn more about how to take care of yourself and how to lead others in a few short months than you could in a lifetime of civilian activity. In the Army, your opportunities for advancement and leadership are unlimited. But you've got to have what it takes. The man who measures up here will succeed anywhere. Can you measure up? If you think you can, then here's an opportunity for you to serve your country and build a man-sized career for yourself that will take you as far as you want to go. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.